welcome to my channel this is sam and i'm playing starfield there are like lots of missions i'm involved in i don't know how i got to level 4 i think i did some i did missions okay let's start with this one i think we can Good talk. We appear to have a visitor. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? I see. Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. This is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. He's here with the artifact. Thank you, Mateo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. Are you hearing this? Do you all believe me now? Whether it happened or not, let's get down. If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? But gentlemen, can we please focus? No, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have, the artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like that. It took a magic. We thought there were only two of them at first. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the solar systems can do that. None of them. This proof. Easy girl. Breathe. Look at this. Have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, at least there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wage with Patrick. You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting. Now, would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend? <laughs> so... Are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? Fair enough. But you need a place to stay in the city, right? Why don't you settle in here? We owe you that much. Come find me when you're ready. And here. I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability? Hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head. Eight thousand? Holy shit. Okay, when I'm ready, I have to come to her. Dog. I know he gets into trouble all the time. Everyone just sort of accepts he'll be fine, but still. Ask if you've got questions. Speak up if you have ideas. We're all here for the same reason. <laughs> well, I suppose that station in orbit is more than paid for. Are you doing okay? 
I'm not sure anyone really asked you. I don't want you to think we're focused on the artifacts and nothing else. You matter too. You've done something really significant bringing that artifact here. I'm Matteo, theological scholar by trade, but now, well, an explorer like you. It's really good to have you with us. I'm not gonna lie, I really wish I could have seen this for myself. It's hard to judge otherwise. Both you and Barrett saw something. I don't think that's a coincidence. Did it feel like it was trying to tell you something? I don't want to necessarily use the words divine revelation, but, you know, if the label fits. That sure lines up with everything else about these artifacts. It's all connected. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. We just need more data, which means more artifacts. Well, there was some overlap in interests. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. I'd made a really incredible discovery, only to lose it to a greedy corporation. So I tried to steal it back. In the process, I met Walter. Turned out he owned the corporation. After a long talk, we realized we had a lot in common, and I was invited to join Constellation. The second one was on Kazaa, buried the same as the one you found. But the first one, right under our noses for years, sitting in storage, masquerading as an oversized paperweight. Can you imagine potentially the greatest discovery in human history collecting dust? Take care of yourself. Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of line. I haven't needed to go out there in a bit. Why? Oh, I just... I am sorry I besmirched your chosen profession and made assumptions about your character. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So. Let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and off times grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. By the way, in addition to a place to stay, the Lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances, the whole thing. You can even fashion industrial pieces for large-scale projects, if you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet, that is. I'm a fan of self-reliance, so I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. Up until very recently, I'd likely have dismissed it as, I don't know, hallucinations. But now, I'm not sure what to think. I don't suppose you have a history of this sort of thing, do you? Yes, I imagined as much. Barrett expressed something similar in his own unique way. I'm no scientist. I leave that to the likes of Barrett and young Noel there. But I think we can all agree there's something unusual going on here. You think? Frankly, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in years. The most well known for ship manufacture. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. Unfortunately, our success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covet them. The bastards. I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards, and those old salts are stuck in the glory days. 
Me? <laughs> Why, I'm the wallet. Someone has to fund all this, and all my success in business doesn't mean much if I can't put it to good use. I don't pretend to have the daring of Ms. Morgan or the smarts of young Mateo, but I can make sure that they have the resources they need. And, and as you've now seen, those resources aren't being wasted. We're onto something big here. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric pursuits. For years, I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now I call the Lodge home as much as anywhere else. Remember, you're representing all of us out there. We've always considered ourselves explorers. We mind. This really is uncharted territory, isn't it? It's almost as if you think I'm... That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you right now. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. It's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. Oh, gosh. No, I mean, that's that's flattering, but really, we're making this up as we go. Until you arrived, we only had the two, and the vaguest sense that there was something more at work. There's still so much we don't know, and that means a lot of work ahead of us. Oh, right, that. If we're approaching this rationally, I suppose we'd call them visual and auditory hallucinations. What you perceived as yeah, lights and music nighty. could be overloaded neural input. Your brain's attempt to make sense of something. An energy surge, some other phenomenon. Sure, I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. I wasn't there when it happened. I'm just thinking it through. That's okay. Now that this has happened to both you and Barrett, we can know to maybe expect it in the future. Be a little more prepared. We're all in this together now, right? Well, Constellation's been around forever, more than 50 years now, but we only became aware of the artifacts recently. Barrett discovered the first one about two years ago, right under our noses. And he was the one who got this all in motion. It's a shame he isn't here to see this. Planning on sticking around then? Good. I think we can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. Right, so you've seen the library, obviously. Walter is quite proud of the collection. But Matteo has made more than a few contributions. Gardens are out the doors there, if you need a moment of quiet contemplation. Emphasis on the quiet part, at least usually. Let's head upstairs. Sebastian Banks, Constellation's founder, had this place built decades ago. It was a big to-do at the time, but most people in the city have forgotten it. So this is the bar. Usually no tender, so help yourself with them, please, of course. Now let's see about that room. You're in luck. We were almost at max occupancy already, but there's still one room up for grabs. 
It's been nice having the place cell phone. Okay, this will be you. Common room on one side, so that'll be quiet, and Mateo on the other side, so maybe a little less quiet. I'm sure Sarah has something planned for each of us, so I better get back to it. Don't want to keep her waiting too long. Enjoy! first track, then we go into the room.
best of your abilities. to go to the last one so let's do it Maybe you call that Carl. You're just not the Carl I was waiting for. We're supposed to be investigating a power drain down here. People have been reporting brownouts for a while. And Mass finally decided to follow up on me. I can't be in two places at once. And Carl isn't here. So I'm just trying to look inconspicuous. Co-worker of mine on this assignment with me. Clearly not taking it seriously. Not really surprising. Most folks are fine with ignoring what goes on down here. We're trying to isolate a power drain, which looks like it's the result of a large amount of power being rerouted through various subsystems. But it's kind of a two-person job. Someone needs to find the junction boxes associated with those subsystems and power them down. The other person needs to monitor the system remotely. It's pretty simple, really, and relatively safe. Only a small chance of electrocution. What? Well, since you're here and Carl isn't, and I really want to get this solved, I will pick you up on that. What I need is very technical. I can talk you through it remotely. I'm going to head to the monitoring station. The first box we're looking for is over near UC Surplus. You know, Antonio's place. I can contact you once you get there. Hello. 
Think about the trade business? Who you know matters as much as anything else. <coughs> Mess with me and I'll serve you my famous knuckle sandwich. <laughs> Scared, aren't ya? If you got anything valuable on ya, keep it close. <laughs> Never know what might happen down here. What do you want to know? You with security? You do have a bit of a rebellious air about you. But maybe that's exactly what you want me to think. Besides, I'm not gonna reveal my operation to some nobody who just waltzed up to me. Not yet, anyway. Are you kidding? Take a look around. You're in the most boring place in the galaxy. Only good thing down here is Kay's house. Best cooking in the settled systems. And let me tell you, I know my food. But I can't even go there anymore because Kay banned me for bad behavior. Me! Can you believe that? What a load of crap! Yeah, well, newsflash, buddy. I don't like anything about you, either. In fact, I dislike you with such conviction that I'm inclined to fight you right now. What do you say we go ten rounds? Right here, right now. Yeah, I, uh... Well, luckily for you, I actually hurt my hand when I was punching some other asshole's lights out. Uh, Doc says it'll take a few weeks or months to heal. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a rain check. But once my hand heals, you're done for. Hey, beat it! Ridiculous man. Maybe the 
just another way to just to see it. What is this a block? You can see it right guys. इसमें ही बस पचहत्तर राउंड है और इसमें है ये इन और ग्रेंडल दोनों में गोली है बहुत इजी में गोली नहीं देख रहा फिलहाल कटल लेके घूमता हूँ मैं फिर से पहचान लगेगा Let's 
Sun Vera. चेंज करने नहीं दे रहा ना I'm not going 
वहीं पर खड़ा था इतना अजीब जगह फंस गया यार उसको गोली मार के Commander Kibwe Ikande, and 
that I'm in charge of this operation for the UC system. Are you familiar with what we do? United Colonies System Defense. Does that help you figure out exactly what it is we do? Actually, that's something that we're trying. I figured we needed to branch out a bit, broaden our horizons. UC Sysdev is a division of the UC Navy. While they handle the big picture stuff, we deal with a very particular problem. The Crimson Fleet. That conflict is where you enter the picture. Are we really playing this game? The pirates? Like the ones you tangled with on Victor? Please stop pretending you have no idea what I'm talking about. On the books, they maintain combat-ready space-borne forces to deter aggression and ensure the safety of the United Colonies. What all that fancy claptrap means is that they're the ones who fight in the wars to keep our territory secure. Smart decision. We've been prodding at the Crimson Fleet for years, trying to take them down one ship at a time. We barely scratch the surface. If we can get someone on the inside, we have a shot at finding a loose thread we can pull to bring it all down. If the military rolls in and attacks the Crimson Fleet, we have a full-scale war on our hands. That means losses, heavy losses, that the United Colonies can't afford. Okay. So this is like straightforward. Not for me. For yourself. Look, I'm going to make this simple. I'll bring to work for UC Sysdev. Together, we take down the Crimson Fleet. Refuse, and I tell these guys to throw you into the nearest lockup. Might even tack on an extra few hundred credits to your fine. I'm not coercing you into doing anything. I'm simply giving you a chance to redeem yourself. So, what do you say? You going to work with me? Or should I find someone else? If I didn't think you had a chance, I would have left you in locker. You're just going to have to follow your instincts and trust me. You aren't leaving until I have an answer. Smart choice. I'm going to have one of my men escort you to the operations center. I strongly suggest that you don't give him any trouble. And don't bother trying to leave the ship. I think you'll find all access to the docking area is fully restricted. Alright, let's go. So, it's a the op instead of serving the time. Gonna be the commander's new role. Excuse me. Huh? Don't leave me alone. Oh. Huh? Infiltrating a bunch of pirates. Got a lot of guts. Chat later. Nobody here is going I'm 
Jones. Commander, once we get rid of all the pirates, the galaxy will be a better place. Docking port 5 and docking port 7 Docking port 2 and 4 So docking port 5 Ikande's a level 2 Try not to touch anything until he actually clears you I think this one is one and three. Just shut up and do as you're told. Get up. The, if you have any questions, save them for Commander E. Conde. I'm not authorized to answer you. The Commander can handle it. Get out of line and I'll put you down. Clear? Just shut up and do... I'm not authorized to answer your questions. The Commander can handle any of your... If you have any questions, save them for Commander E. Conde. I've got nothing to say to you, Convict. How do I go there? What do I have to do here, man? See? This is the same place. Hello? Oh no, this is different. Lost a bet to one of the officers. I've got mob duty now on my birthday. It's gonna suck. Back in basic training, I have the record for fleet kills. Wherever the Crimson Fleet go, we'll fall. Excuse me. Sysdef Marines are the best of the best. Hello. See all that chest candy on Commander Ikande? That means he's seen some shit. Okay, hello. It's gonna be easier. 
the moment. We will talk later, okay? <coughs> Established your level of cooperation, Lucas. I want to introduce you to your new home. This is the operation center of the UC Vigilance. Sysdef's nerve center dedicated to the destruction of the Crimson Fleet. Whether this ship is impressive or not, you're the key element that we've been lacking. Whoa. We need eyes and ears inside the Crimson Fleet. Someone who can feed us information, evidence, and expose their weaknesses. The catch is that you can't just knock on their front door and ask for an application. Getting inside is going to take some finesse. Let's get one thing straight right now. While you're working for me, I'm going to treat you like one of my own. Whatever crimes you committed in the past no longer matter. You're now an agent of Sister. Meaning that it's my job to keep you alive. I do. Our intelligence has managed to find a possible opening into the Crimson Fleet through Sersha Bowden. One of their contacts. She works for the Trade Authority in Sidonia. So you'll be using a container of Aurora we've loaded on your ship to get her attention. That's right. So it'll be your job to convince this person that you're the real deal. Oh, again, Once you my your way to the Crimson Fleet, then the operation proceeds to evidence gathering. That's where my second in command, Lieutenant Gillian Toft, comes into the picture. She'll explain everything you need to know. We move quick around here. Better get used to it. Remember. This entire operation rests on your ability to infiltrate the Crimson Fleet and bring us the evidence we need to take them down. At this point, whether you like it or not, you're working for me. Look, I don't like it before me. you begin, I want to make something perfectly clear. As an undercover operative for UC Sister, you'll be expected to follow our code of conduct and ethics. Allow yourself to stray too far off the path, and you stand a good chance of spiraling out of control. The Crimson Fleet doesn't follow the rules. They only abide by one thing. Money. All of their morals and social graces fall by the wayside in pursuit of their greed. At first glance, this can appear quite enticing, so I'm warning you not to get lured into their trap. Think you can handle that? Well, you better learn quick. Otherwise, I'll start looking for someone to take your place. Anyway, it's time to hand you over to Lieutenant Toft. She'll brief you about the details of the evidence gathering portion of the operation. Now, get out of here. And good luck. All we know is that she's been with the Trade Authority for years, which means she's been privy to some seriously shady deals. She's shrewd and she's diligent. The only reason we were able to connect her with the Crimson Fleet at all was thanks to an informant. I'm afraid she's the best lead we've got. That's easy to answer. You don't. <laughs> we'll be monitoring your activities from the vigilance and attempting to keep it within your vicinity. When you feel you've gathered enough evidence, and at the completion of your assignments, head back here for a debrief. Beyond that, you're completely on your own. For your own safety, 
Nobody but myself and the crew of the Vigilance will be aware that you're working for the United Colonies. Basically, if you land in jail, you're going to have to deal with the fans. While you're running with the Crimson Fleet, you're undoubtedly going to be faced with some morally gray decisions. It's going to be difficult for you to weigh the consequences of pulling the trigger while maintaining your cover. Do what you have to do, but remember why you're out there in the first place. I'm not advocating violence. I'm merely urging you to weigh the consequences before you open fire. Look, I can see that you're struggling with this. So let me simplify this for you. If there's a route to your goal which doesn't involve killing innocent people, I'm urging you to follow that path. Use your instincts. I'm certain you'll do the right thing. Yeah, I just killed some innocent people there, starting with that. As you were. Who was joking ah. with me. start from here in the next one so thank you guys for watching stay tuned for more and don't try to copy me because copying me will have consequences that you will not like guys so believe me don't just indiscriminately kill people otherwise you will get stuck like me See you soon. Have a good day. And catch you up in RDO 2 next. Take care. Bye.